Going in the mix of the two, three, four, and five seeds. They were able to perform so incredibly well down the stretch to earn the number two seed and have this chance here today. We're underway from Boise. In the quarterfinals of the Big Sky Conference Tournament. One game still left to be played later on tonight, Northern Colorado and Eastern Washington. John Knight the third with it on the first possession. Was it back out? Moody for three and it's blocked. The intense defense of Portland State making its presence felt right away. Really good quickness, closing to the ball there, and Knight doing what he does, getting the ball to the paint and compressing the defense. That time, Portland State was able to recover. Alley-oop, Clint Thomas with an early welcoming to this game. He gets the party started with the dunk. And a small to big uh, back screen that the small guy didn't help on. A nice set play to start the game. And that is hitting it out of the park on the first pitch if you're the Portland State team. Another deflection, almost another steal. You see the active hands, the deflections, the intensity. It is tough to keep them off of overplaying the pass and getting deflections in the lane. Just great, great overall quickness. As I've said, in the last 12 games, they have turned the opposition over an average of 20 times a game to go along with 10 steals. Great paint to paint pass. Mason Fawcett with the first bucket for Southern Utah. The Thunderbirds, the number two offense in the conference. Thomas, not shy here today. He's coming off a game high 17 and already with five. Khalid Thomas may be playing with a little bit of chip on his shoulder in that he was only honorable mention all league. As I said in the open, he could have very easily been on the second or third team, he is very, very talented at 6'10". There's a number of times you can make a statement. The biggest time is right here in Boise. During the tournament, Dre Marine, who missed the last game due to illness, throws across the river for Moody, and he has another shot that's blocked. Marine will now take a shot, and it runs off the rim. Thomas the rebound. Here's Squire into Marine, and he puts it into the corner of the rim. Southern Utah comes the other way, trailing five to two. That was very good defense by Marine there. Moody with a long pass. Burke with a deflection, two on one. Squire to the rim, he's blocked but fouled. And I think that foul will go on Marine, who did not play in the game along with Tavian Jones in their win over Weber State last Saturday. Boy, just great quickness and activity out of Portland State here in the first two and a half minutes. Damian Squire, who had nine points, five rebounds, was two of 10 from the field, makes this first one. Young man out of Montreal. He's missed one free throw since the start of February. Didn't play in their last game of the year because of an ankle injury and was hobbled a little bit last night when he re-injured that just a little bit, but a pretty tough kid. He's out there and looks like he's pretty healthy tonight. Kick ball. It'll stay with Southern Utah. Seven to two. Vikings in the lead here in the early going. Yesterday, 14 takeaways in the second half, 20 on the game. Portland State struggled a little bit early, but found their groove in that second half and held Idaho State to 0 of 15 from three. That's gonna be tough to do against this team. Marim with a step, throws across the court. John Knight the third with the spin and a nice bounce pass for Spurgeon. It gets away. Another steal for the Vikings. Ahead for Burke. It's a 9-2 start. Portland State. And what you may be seeing a little bit is that opening game, opening tournament jitters a little bit by SUU. We've seen it a few times already in the first two games of the tournament where the team, the Vikings, played last night. SUU playing their first game having a little trouble getting out of the blocks here, so to speak. Knight gets to the paint, the kick out for Fawcett. And that shot is gonna be there a lot tonight because John Knight the third is gonna be in the paint a lot tonight. Left it short here, Southern Utah. Having a tough time getting started today, down nine to two. 
Marine throws out for John Knight the third. Straight away for Spurgeon, who's been so vital in this team's second half of the season, just continuing to evolve. Spurgeon has this loose ball, has it stripped and taken away. Another steal for Portland State. Damian Squire looking to go against Moody. On the block, 11 to two. And Portland State, that pattern. Well, in both teams, as I mentioned, their first game in the tournament, when you've got one under your belt, like Portland State does, you're a little bit more relaxed, you feel good about that win, SUU coming in their first game in the tournament, and uh, you know, a little bit of, of tournament jitters, I call it, even though they've got almost 30 games under their belt, it takes a little while to adapt. Nick Fleming just into the game, misses there. Loose ball on the ground, and they all seem to be going the way of Portland State. Well, that's because they get after that loose ball, <laughs> like I said, like a group of piranhas with a, a little bit of hamburger in the, in the water there. Man, they are all over the place. Iman handed off to Alley, and an offensive foul is called against Portland State. You know, you're fine with that handoff, but you gotta quit moving. You can't continue on. Uh, he stuck his knee out there a little bit. That was a pretty easy call in my mind. First time these two teams have met in a conference tournament game. And it'll be the last time as well, Southern Utah will leave the conference after this game, or after this tournament, I should say. They've been as in soon the as league. their season is over. They've been in the league 10 years. They will leave for the WAC when, this, uh, when they are eliminated from postseason. Harrison Butler, loose ball on the ground again. And a jump ball, and the arrow goes to Portland State. Whether it's because of a jump ball, or whether or not they just collect it, if it's on the ground, they're gonna get it. Wow, what an unbelievable le level of energy Portland State is playing with right now. SUU has countered to try to bring a little more quickness to the table by bringing in their super six man, Harrison Butler. And they're playing small now without Spurgeon, their center in the, in the uh, lineup. A turnover as Damian Squire travels there into the lane. Damian Squire, who made his debut against Sacramento State, then started against Montana, and has averaged 11 points a game. It's interesting to see who evolves as the season goes on. He's been one of those guys. We'll see if SUU can kind of settle in a little bit here. Portland. Offensively, out of all kinds of rhythm. John Knight the third, hoping to change that. Well, Portland State switched a big to him as he, he ran that little post rub. And that's going to be an issue. If you're going to switch a big guy to John Knight III, who to me is one of the top two athletes in the entire league, he and Colby McEwen, it's going to be hard to stay in front of him. One of the big questions for Portland State, how well can they operate offensively without getting run out stops and takeaways? We saw that a challenge for them a bit yesterday. Well, they are definitely not what you call a half-court offensive team. They like to get it up and down, score off your turnovers as we have alluded to, and then gang the glass. Knight. Back and down on Starks. Air mails the pass, and another turnover for Southern Utah. That's five already. And John Knight the third is a guy who makes a whole lot of plays some of them are just like that, but you put up with that because he is such a great player. He's been number one or two in turnovers in the league this entire season. And again, I've had great players that make a lot of plays and not all of them are good. Carter, a straightaway three. They hit 12 of them in one of their regular season meetings back on January 17th. Carter with 10 points last night, five of 10 from the field, old one for three, so that's his first three-point make in the tournament. Fawcett, a lean, and a foul is called as he was on the drive. Well, the big guy, Iman, having a little trouble staying in front of guys off the dribble drive, his second foul. Now, remember, he fouled Knight last time, and Mason Fawcett, Mason Fawcett, 
third team all Big Sky, the all-time leading rebounder at SUU. And his runner-up happens to be a teammate. <laughs> yes, how about that, Harrison Ford, <laughs> who's only started two games this year recently, went over the 1,000-point mark and is the second all-time leading rebounder at SUU. Harrison Butler with it. He's the second leading rebounder. Fawcett off the back iron, but gets it to go the second time. I'm a little bit uh, not mystified, but I thought Harrison Butler might get the Reserve of the Year award. He's been terrific coming off the bench for SUU. He did not get that. Thomas, another hmm. three for Portland State. They're three for three now. And yeah, this is a team that was 10th in the league in three-point field goal percentage. Another turnover. Down the court goes Ruffin. And it's out of bounds to Portland State. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Thunderbirds and for John Knight the third. Thomas has eight points now. He's a perfect three of three from the field. You mentioned it, your stars have got to play at a high level. Without a doubt. You're gonna go deep in this tournament. Here he is again. And this time he shows he's human. But for a moment, we weren't sure, 17 to six. Well, as I said, he may be playing with a little bit of chip on his shoulder, getting only honorable mention in his mind. A deep drive and a double team. Butler for three, no. Long rebound to Starks. Portland State likes to run it. That's what they try to do here. Butler went three of four from the three-point line in their win Saturday night over at Weber State. And clutch threes to clutch put that thing threes. away. He and Moody. A nice cut, a nice find, and Starks gives his team a 13-point lead. That's their biggest of the game. Portland State has it dialed in early. Boy, they are just flying around the court right now. Fleming, a shot bait. Out of the corner, Fawcett for three. It's off the top of the backboard. Starks moving it quickly. Has it taken away. Great pick by Moody. Down the court for Marine. No good and a great contest on the layup. This team is just relentless defensively. Well, it is amazing how quickly they are closing to shooters on a help situation, a help and recovery situation and that time Marine looked like he had a breakaway layup that there was three black shirts beating down the floor by the time he laid it up I think. Here goes Marlon Ruffin against Dan and Moody in a shot in 12 of their last 13 regular season games only scored 73 plus in one of the previous 13 against division one opponents. You wonder when things flip for a team. You've coached a number of different guys over the course of your career but that was clearly when things changed for Portland State. Well, I've told you, team chemistry and confidence can come and go in a weekend, and that is when it came to light for the Vikings. Butler was coming downhill. Jump ball, it'll stay with Southern Utah, but you're seeing, even as you're able to break the paint against this Portland State defense, even if you're in transition, finishing plays is just brutally tough, as Curtis was able to reach in there and defend that shot. Well, they did the same thing to Idaho State last night. They just speed you up in virtually everything you do. You feel like you're playing against six players sometime, or you feel like someone's chasing you, and you are being chased. You're being chased by the Vikings. They are just all over the place right now. Carter misses on this three-point attempt. Spurgeon the rebound. Southern Utah trying to at least get stops and then turn them into buckets, but offensively, it has been an uphill battle. Just six points in the first 10 minutes and change here. And Southern Utah, one of their last seven. They haven't scored in over three minutes. Boy, they have done a terrific job when Knight gets to the paint, coming over from the weak side and getting between he and the basket. He has yet to be able to complete a drive. Curtis with a two-hand jam after the block from Thomas. What a start for Portland State. And what a great job of Hayden Curtis of running the floor and his teammate 
rewarding him by putting it right on the money. Great pass by Michael Carter III, who leads this team in assists. I want to talk about depth. When we speak about the deepest teams in this conference, this team deserves to be in that conversation as much as no, any. No question, and, and Chase Colburn deserves a lot of credit for that. Like I've, you've heard me say, you just don't wake up one day with a deep team. You have really got to cultivate that. You've got to play guys in tough situations. You've got to get them out of their comfort zone coming off that bench, and he's done a great job of that. Knight skying in. That's the type of drive he likes to have. And for John Knight the third, that bucket there gives him four points and an offensive foul the other end. What so he, John Knight the third doing a number of things to help his team here. A bucket, now taking a charge. To give you some idea of what kind of athlete he is, he lays it up at the other end and gets back and gets in front of Ali there. And he did that all in the blink of an eye. Marin poked, knocked away, and has to chase it down. Alley with the harassment. Portland State just so good at help and recovery in those scramble situations. Look at it, they are just flying around. Oh my gosh. A foul on the shot, Starks got a little too much of him, so Marin will go to the line for two. You know, when a team overplays the pass like that, when there's so many scrambling situations, you think you can get to the line against them a lot. That's when it comes to this team, they might put you on the line, but they're worth the risk in their mind. Well, that, that's the way they play. They play, you talk about scramble situations, that's the way they play. They play to help and recover. When they recover, they are just flying at you. Trey Marine, who had just one other offer and chose to go to Southern Utah, an 80% free throw shooter the whole season. It doesn't get to the line a lot. He's one of my favorite players in the league. The third leading scorer in the history of SUU. Third in career assists, seventh in steals. He's one of those guys that makes the game easier for his teammates. He is a true point guard and a true warrior. What a nice move by John Knight the third. He's starting to feel it here. First team all Big Sky Conference running up and down and playing this style may be playing to his strength because as he has demonstrated, in the last couple of minutes, he can get from one end to the other like a scalded dog. Carter, who sparked a big 11-0 run yesterday, leans into Moody and finishes a weight room bucket for Michael Carter III. I'm not sure he spent all that much time in the weight room, but he is a great finisher around the rim. He was the leading scorer for his team at Long Beach State. John Knight the third has been feeling some rhythm here lately. So it has to terminate the dribble at the top of the key. And Moody, with the clock down to six. Here's Marine, a mid-ranger, short. Now the rebound is to Carter. And Marine has been sick for about 10 days. He didn't play Starts against the reverse. State. Marine still looks a little sick, a little winded. Of course, it may be this Portland State defense that's making him sick, but I talked to him before the game. He said, no, I'm going to play. But he didn't play the second half against Idaho State on Thursday, nor the entire game against Weber State. An offensive fight. That pressure, if you fight through the pressure, you can usually get an easy shot. Fighting through that pressure has been a challenge here in this first 13 minutes. Thomas lit it up earlier. Misfires on this one. He's three of six from the field. Portland State up 14. Southern Utah trying to figure out how to find some offensive rhythm here. Knight throws for Marine. A good look. And he can't get it, Spurgeon, the tap back. A guy who has the best two-point field goal percentage in the Big Sky this year. Double figures in eight of his last 11. The most improved player in the entire Big Sky Conference. Ezekiel Alley can't get that, Spurgeon the board. An outlet to Marine. The game is pretty fast for Spurgeon. He's gonna struggle to get low post catches. As I said, the big 
6'11 Aussie, I think, is the most improved player in the entire league. Loose ball, and it's collected by Alley. Behind the back, and Stein and his squires. John Knight III, who's been nursing a bad hip for probably two months. Damian Squire now with that bucket has six points. SUU playing, I don't know if we've mentioned, without the preseason player of the year, Tavian Jones, their leading scorer. Last year, first team all Big Sky Conference. The first one they've ever had in the 10 years that they've been in the Big Sky Conference. He has not played in the last two and a half games and doesn't look like he will play at all. And he was a pretty big part of those meetings. Scored 36 when Southern Utah hosted Portland State. Southern Utah shot 61% from the field that day, 41% from three. The second matchup, a different story, as the thrilling win in overtime for Southern Utah. One that Southern Utah had to have clutch shot after clutch shot as they trailed by four with just 25 seconds left and put together the late rally. Boy, they are all over <laughs> well, it. Well, that's a pretty good indication of what kind of heat they're putting on Southern Utah when you can't even get the ball inbounds as big Khalid Thomas just threw that one back as they were trying to inbound the ball just uh, on an end out of bounds play. Nothing is easy. And right here, Coburn is saying, hey, that ball was off of us and then bounced off of them. But they will stay with Southern Utah. And as you said, nothing is easy. How about, can we get the ball inbounds here on an end out? A poke from behind. What a play by Michael Carter. He had so many of those. And you can feel the swagger and the confidence from this Portland State team. There's a seven next to their name, but you wouldn't know it with the level they've been playing at. Well, they, they play, they had a win against Idaho State last night. They looked like a different team. They looked like they've taken it to a new level in just 24 hours. Squire, who has six so far, goes to Thomas, who has eight. Carter. Such a spark yesterday. Tries to go with a backdoor pass to Ruffin, and the steal now goes to Southern Utah. Fleming hits Spurgeon, goes into Thomas, he's fouled, and he makes it. Jason Spurgeon, who's second in offensive rating in the Big Sky Conference. Well, before their last regular season game at Utah, I mean, at Weber State, which was a monumental win for them, he had been averaging 14 points and shooting 60% from the field. And I made the comment last Saturday that if he continues to improve at the rate he's at, he won't be just the best big guy in the league. He'll be the best, best guy in the league. I'm telling you, he has turned into an outstanding post player at 6'11", 235. He scored in double figures twice in the first 19 games. He's done it eight of the last 11. A blocking foul is called against Southern Utah here. They'll go against Barnes. Just have another look, Coach. Now, he didn't get there in time. Good effort. Threw his body in there. And now Coach Coburn is saying, how is that not a shooting foul? But they'll inbound it from the baseline. So both coaches displeased with the call <laughs> for different reasons. Squire. Well, the Vikings are just a runaway train right now. Burke fakes to the base, throws straight up top. It's Damian Squire knifing through, can't get it. Ruffin is blocked by Spurgeon, and the putback is on the rim, no good from Iman. No one can get it to go down from point blank range. John Knight the third, road runners up the court. Blocking foul and a big 50-50 call. That would have been the second on Knight. A nice job of chasing Knight down, getting in front. As I've said, John Knight the third along with Kobe Bryant, the two top athletes 
I think, in the league. Both Kobe of them first. Kobe, what did I say? Yeah, Kobe Bryant was a pretty good athlete. Kobe Bryant too. wasn't bad. Well, remember, he it's our third a, game now. Yeah, yeah. No, he would have had a Kobe great Bryant. career in the Big Sky yeah, Conference. He would have. He would have. Kobe <laughs> McEwen, thank you for that assist there. Both he and John Knight, the third, first team all Big Sky, with good reason. Just high, high-level athletes. Carter backing down with pace. Pump is actually proud of this. He has received the NFL Sunday ticket for free three years in a row because when they call to ask why he's not renewing, he says, I'm a Lions fan. I just I can't do it. And then they've comped it. So <laughs> Well, it's pretty pretty wily move there, okay. so to speak. I'm not a Lions fan, but <laughs> I'm not gonna turn down anything exactly. that you offer up from free. Exactly. Todd Simon, you're right, has been absolutely fabulous and his work with this program. Speaks for itself, especially their work this year. And the jumper in the lane is up and no good from Fleming. If SUU could just get this down to single digits before they go into the locker for halftime, they've got to feel pretty good about things the way the Vikings just bushwhacked them to start this game. Alley oop, back door, Michael Carter the third. What a nice set play coming from Coach Colburn and the Benz. That was a little reverse curl, so to speak, where he curled around that high post and no one helped. That was a set play and a wonderful call from Portland State's bench. How fragile are the final three minutes of the half here? Very fragile. Again, if, if, uh, if the Thunderbirds could get this down to 10 or below, I think that is a uh, pretty doable task in the second half. What they can't have happen is Portland State get on a little bit of a more of a run here and get them down 15 or so at halftime. Thomas lost the handle. Recollects. Thomas so far today with eight points. Here's Ruffin. He'll hoist one up. And isn't able to get it. Shoots 34% from three. Had a really tough and hard earned eight points yesterday. Driving in the lane, Fleming is fouled. And SUU, SUU kind of flipping the script a little bit on the Vikings as they're putting a whole bunch of dribble drive pressure on Portland State right now. Portland State looks a little bit winded for good reason. I mean, they have been playing at a very, very high level for almost 18 minutes. Well, we noticed now. that yesterday in the game. They had a moment where they looked like fatigue might be setting in against Idaho State. Well, when, when and they turned it up. When you play pressure defense like they do, it kind of ebbs and flows a little bit. You can't sustain that type of effort for 40 minutes. It, 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 it gets going, uh, a, a steal builds that momentum, but usually there's a little bit of a letdown, which maybe you're seeing right now. Michael Carter the third has nine points. He goes to the high post, and Thomas isn't able to get that one. How about the rebound? Sky and high for it. John wow. Knight the third. Wow. Their guards have been able to get downhill at times here in the later moments of this first half. John Knight will look to do that here. Fleming for three. Misses that one. Thomas snatches the rebound. And for Thomas, that is his fourth. Maybe a little bit of a quick shot for Fleming, but maybe the best shot they're going to get. The Vikings, they can play an up-tempo half-court offense. They can play it with the slowdown game, too. So versatile. They like playing out of this high 1-4. That's where that last curl to a dunk came for. I like the 1-4 because you can get easy elbow catches and get into your offense. There. Another deflection by Burke. But John Knight the third collects the loose ball. He's cut off on the block. Tries to put one up and it just swirls out. And Knight the third very frustrated with himself there knowing that was one that should have went down for him. Both teams in the bonus here. Portland State with a chance to play a two for one but it doesn't look like they're gonna take it. And here is Starks for three. 
And as I said, if you're SUU, you'd like to cut it to 10 and not go down 15, and that's exactly what happened. If they could get a score here, it may give them just a little bit of momentum going into halftime. Thanks for letting me do that once. No, no, you like that. And Starks from downtown, <laughs> and the Vikings have a 15-point lead. <laughs> Thank you, Hot Rod. Oh, that's Marv Albert. Marv Albert. Yeah. <laughs> Here goes John Knight the third. Pins one in the rim on the layup. Clock winding down. Here's Thomas. And your halftime conversation would be what? Well, they have come back from big deficits before, but I think your philosophy on that, John, or uh, uh, Tony, would be let's cut five points off this lead in the first five minutes and get it to 10. Then let's play the next five minutes and try to get it to five with 10 minutes left. And so far, that hadn't worked as Khalid Thomas goes right to the rack and extends this lead to 17. He has 10 points now here so far in this game. Another interesting part about that first half, Coach, Portland State yesterday was dominated on the boards 43 to 24. They gave up 14 offensive rebounds to Idaho State. They're winning the rebound war after this first half, and they rank dead last in defensive rebound percent. Well, I'm sure that was brought to their attention by their head coach, Jace Colburn, who has them playing lights out right now. I was going to ask my buddy, the lead official, Ray, Ruben Ramos, if he realized Portland State was playing with seven players that first half, because that's the way it seemed. They were flying around at an ups. Southern Utah shot 61% from the field and 41% from three. As John Knight the third grimaces after letting go of that free throw. But the big difference there is you had a guy named Jones who played for Not Southern bad. Utah, who's out with an injury. He had 36 in that game. And boy, do they miss him in a matchup like this. Well, he was preseason player of the year, the first 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 team all conference guy in Southern Utah's 10 year history in the Big Sky Conference. So yeah, when you got a guy who can throw 30 up on the scoreboard for you, you're going to miss him at the offensive end. Carter bumped and fouled on the drive. Yes, such great team quickness by this Portland State team and it is amazing to me, Tony the difference in their level of quickness or seemingly than what it was last night. I mean, they, they had a tough win over Idaho State last night, but they looked like a different team tonight. John Knight the third with the interception, the chase down and the block by Thomas. Even after what appeared to be a catastrophic turnover, the effort and transition defense, I mean, you mentioned rebounding being a sign of effort, transition defense is something so many teams like to talk about, but not all teams like to take this amount of pride in. Portland State is as good in that area as any team I've ever seen. Fawcett, muscling in the lane. Well, Tony, I, I, I felt as a head coach, transition defense was something we had to work on every day. And when I didn't work on it, one day it showed in the next game. I, sometimes I would not work on it to try to save guys' legs, and it showed that we didn't work on the next time we played. Alley, what a tough bucket! And Ezekiel Alley with his first two points, and that was about as hard earned as any. Wow, what an acrobatic play, Ezekiel Alley, the player of the week, the second week of February, when he had three games where he went 22, 23, and 26 points. He can score in a number of ways, as he just showed. Southern Utah, down now by 16. Moody for three. They're now 0 for 8 from deep. What a rebound by Fawcett. Moody, another try. 0 for 9. Fawcett, back up and in. Fawcett, the leading offensive rebounder in the league, the all-time leading rebounder at SUU, getting all over the offensive glass then. Turnover here on the travel by Thomas. Coach Simon hoping to get the merry-go-round started where you can get some stops, get some scores, get some stops and get some scores. You mentioned that transition defense thing. How hard was it to get all 12 or 15 guys to have the same definition of what it takes to play hard in that area? Well, it has to be a cornerstone of your program. When you work on it every day, they have to understand that is one of the things that we do and we take pride in it. 
Moody, a rhythm three. And Moody having a tough time from deep. He's now 0 of 5, and he's had some looks. He has. He hit a couple daggers last Saturday against Weber State for them to win that huge road game at Weber State by 10, and Moody and Butler hit some threes late in the game that sealed that. Knight injured his hand or arm a little bit earlier, but the legs seem fine. He leaps <laughs> yeah. up and dunks that one. The lead is down to 12. I'm not sure he has legs. I think he's got springs under skin. Boy, he gets up in a hurry. And now Southern Utah just about to get a takeaway. In the post, they go to Carter. One-on-one -on -one against Moody. The help comes from Spurgeon. Loose ball is grabbed by Portland State, and Iman is fouled. Remember, we talked about if you're the Thunderbirds are trying to cut five points off this 15-point halftime lead in the first five minutes. They've got it down to 12, depending on what Iman does here at the, at the free throw line. Iman, the 6'10 sophomore from Los Alamitos, California. Misses on the first, he's just eight of 16 coming into today from the line. His dad played football at Chico State. That doesn't surprise me, he is a big kid at 6'10", 235. You can see him playing in the fall. Yes. In a great game of football as well. He's got the body for it and the physicality too. And he comes up. With an 0 for 2 trip here. The little breaks that Southern Utah may need along the way as they try to mount this comeback. Knight slicing through and the block by Jacob Iman. He swatted that one like his sister who plays volleyball at UC Santa Barbara. Bump, set, and spike. Well, I'm going to use a football term here to describe Portland State's defense. They have great closing Timing or whatever that is. The closing is, speed. Closing yeah. speed, my gosh, you think you've got an open shot and they just come out of nowhere. We've used fewer basketball references than other sports in the last few minutes. Straightaway jumpers, <laughs> no, no good have. from Ruffin. But the point has certainly been made. Up the court to John Knight the third. Spurgeon. Guarded here by him and spins all the way around. A blocking foul is called and a correct one. Yes. On that one, Iman really had to keep sliding over to try and cut him off. And here's another non-basketball term that you've heard me use before <laughs> to describe Spurgeon. He is a wiggler in the post. You, to defend him, you have got to stay down, keep your feet moving, or he's going to wiggle around you, which is exactly what he did. Is that a wrestling reference? Yeah. Yeah. And we've hit just about every You're single sport yeah. <laughs> that you could imagine. Jason Spurgeon was on the all-academic team a year ago. You mentioned the involvement in his game. It's continued to be such a weapon for this team. And he's hit both free throws. And coming into tonight, 68.5% free throw shooter in conference play. That five points you wanted down there, Here they've been is. able to do it. Here it is. In, it's a 10 with, point game. With a minute to go. Alley with the pass just off the mark to Ruffin. There goes Alley. Puts it off the glass, can't get it. Southern Utah getting the stops, now trying to turn them into scores. John Knight the third, another chase down block, and this one from Curtis. Ahead of the floor, Alley with a finger roll score. And there was that closing speed I talked about by Portland State. And that closing speed we talked about has taken three or four what the Thunderbirds thought were easy shots and turned them into stops. Defensively, Portland State was 10th out of 11 teams in three-point percentage defense. But Southern Utah is 0 of 10 from deep so far in this game. Moody gets it to the paint, a deflection as they try to go out to Marine. Just those little moments like that. And now, a deflection, a possible takeaway, it is a turnover. Just active hands every single time. The 10th turnover for the Thunderbirds. Horton State with nine turnovers. 
of their own. This is just, this game is at like a frenetic pace almost. They're just guys flying everywhere. Lynn Thomas with 10 points, five rebounds, three blocks, having another outstanding night for his Vikings. Carter with the shot clock at 10. Goes up against John Knight. Goes out for Ian Burke. Here's Starks from way outside. It's an air ball. And it will go to Southern Utah. That was a difficult offensive possession there for Portland State as they never really found a rhythm. No, and uh, right now, Khalid Thomas, who I talked about on the bench and getting some minutes for Hayden Curtis, who's played very well in these first two games of the tournament, the big freshman from North Bend, Washington. Moody, another try and still can't hit. He is now a total of 0 of 6 from long range. And a tap back is up and in. Portland State back up by 14. Ian Burke gets credit for that one. And for Burke, this is a guy who hadn't shot the ball yet today, but always finds a way to contribute. We saw some of that yesterday. He does. He's, he's what I call a star role player. He's a great ball mover. He makes everyone around him a little better. Spurgeon with great hands in a crowd the most improved player in the Big Sky Conference. Gets the and one here to bring it back to 12. We talked about Ian Burke, Tony. He leads the team in minutes played, field goal percentage, three point percentage, second in steals, assists, and rebounds. He's not put a lot of stats up there tonight, but that's the type of player he is. He kind of, whatever you need, that's what I can do. Well, you just read all of that off. Other than that, he's done nothing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, the guy is the ultimate team guy. Everyone can talk about it. He is absolutely about being about it. How about a skying in attempt here? But blocked, Hayden Curtis, he is fouled. He'll go to the line. And talking about one other thing that's starting to leak a little bit here for Portland State as we watch the replay of this one, and just the confidence that Curtis continues to play with is amazing. At the break, Southern Utah had just four offensive rebounds. They've had seven already in this half. That is always a concern for Coach Coburn and sits in the back of his mind as he continues to work on being better with defensive rebounding. They rank last in defensive rebound percentage in the conference. As good a defense as they are, they rank very low in a number of categories. Well, as I said, when a team pressures you like they do, if you can play through that first wave of pressure, get the ball reversed, then you're usually going to be able to get a pretty good shot. It has been playing through that first wave of pressure like you just saw that Thomas has been their demise. Finishing on that one. And for Thomas, now he has 12. A corner three is on the way and off. D Barnes empty on that. Loose ball foul. <laughs> <laughs> At the pace of this game, like I said, you know, they deserve they deserve smoke about the, the second media timeout. Nick Fleming goes into the corner. Marine driving the baseline. You know, find Fleming who steps inside. A little floater. Gets and that, it. Tony, is an explanation of what I said fighting pressure. Get that ball reversed at least once. If you get it reversed twice, which they did, then you're going to end up at the rim, which they did. Portland State actually with two second chance points here in this game. They had one recently. SUU now in a 2-3 zone. Let's see if that kind of slows the Vikings down a little bit. Thomas for three. It's too long. And that Portland did State indeed. now four of 11 from three. It's a team that shot just five of 15 from three against Idaho State. They ranked 10th in three-point field goal shooting percentage. But they did have a quality five-game stretch where they shot 88% from two. They just find out what they're best at, and that's what they do. Well, that's a little quick shot by Khalid Thomas, and he pointed to himself knowing that that was not a great shot versus that zone. Fawcett getting inside of Curtis and muscles one up. 
Lawson, who's had an outstanding career, the all-time leading rebounder. Alley-oop the other way, and Curtis jams it from Alley. You can't let the ball be penetrated against your zone like that. You can be in the zone, but you have to guard the ball in a man-to-man -man fashion. Anytime there's dribble penetration, bad things are gonna happen if you're on defense. Lead back to 11, now back to nine as Fawcett answers again. Amazing Fawcett going to work on the low block. He's another guy that has fought kind of a viral infection for about the last 10 days to two weeks. Thomas the shot fake, a step, across for Burke. Catch and shoot three. Burke hits that one, give him five. Portland State up by 12. Burke doesn't shoot a lot of threes, only 63 for the year, but he shoots, shoots them at a, in at a high rate, 38%. 41.7% from three as a team today. Butler backing on Thomas. The help comes, and he gets it, plus the the help just a half second too late. Well, they're now they're getting to the rim a little bit where in the first half that weak side was getting there to take away those easy shots at the rim. It's a 10 point game with 10.53 left to play here in regulation. The Big Sky quarterfinal. Take a look at this, Coach. A lot of back and forth here. Mason Fawcett starting to flex muscles in the paint. Curtis continues to surface and play big off the bench. Mason Fawcett with that turnaround. And then Ian Burke, one of the best stories in the conference this year with that three. But Southern Utah not going away. Well, they've got it down to 10. If they could get it down to single digits inside of 10, I think they've got a shot here of not being upset the number two seed. I'm talking about SUU. Harrison Butler goes to the free throw line. 69% free throw shooter, but since January 21st, 79% from the line. Leaves it up off the front. And that it's hurts. No that could have cut it down to single digits with 11 minutes to go. You got to help yourself to come from behind in this, this situation. Burke, another three. How about that? Ian Burke, a guy who was a walk-on, who went to the University of Seattle, was looking for a place to play, transferred to Portland State, and eventually earned a scholarship there, playing with so much pride and connectivity with his team. He's put them up by 13. Fawcett. Getting deep in the paint time and time again. His third basket in the last couple minutes. And Ian Burke had great footwork. He had all of his footwork done before that ball hit his hands on that ball reversal. Shooters know how to get to their shot. Alley. Going underneath for Curtis, loose ball goes out of bounds. You're talking about Burke, a guy who gets that scholarship. We talked about this yesterday. He gets the scholarship. He didn't know that they were going to retroactively reimburse him for the first quarter of the school year. So magically, he looks into his bank account, and he's got a ton more money. And then what does he do? Gives the money right back to his mom, a person who sacrificed and paid for so much to help him live out his dream to play college basketball. This is as humble a young man that you will ever meet, and he has been a wonderful representative and example for this program he is he is he's a great story and he's a great teammate you can tell that uh how his teammates react to him talking to him about it he was emotional squire for three that's off and the rebound to butler 11 point game suu could really help themselves with the score here now under 10 minutes to play butler with a catch Spin in the lane and back out. Fleming driving hard and can't get it. Fleming now one of five from the field. And had a good look on that drive. And think about SU's last two possessions. They missed the front end of a one and one and obviously get nothing. Then they miss another one right at the rim. Down 11 points. They, they have not helped themselves by completing plays. Just winning those 50-50 balls and getting to all the loose balls. They have an instinct, they have a knack for it. Well, that is what they do if you're preparing your team. It's, it's hard to simulate or un make your team understand the 
uh, the defense you're going to play against if you're playing against Portland State, that swarming defense, and convince them you've got to take care of it and reverse it a time or two. Curtis with the touch. Man, as this guy evolved, he has nine points here today. A steal, and here's Burke for another three. It's off. Boy, this place was about to explode from the Viking fans who are now back up by 13, Portland State. And Hayden Curtis helped him last night off the bench with five points and a rebound in 13 minutes. And that allows him to rest Hayden, or Khalid Thomas. Son. What a take by John Knight the third. 11 point game, 840 to go. John Knight the third is one of the highest flying athletes you're gonna see in college basketball. High post, Thomas the mid-ranger, and the big man showing the touch. Well, that, that's Mason Foss, as much as I love Mason Foss, that he's the middle guy of that 2-3 zone, and when that ball goes to high post, he's got a close to that. He doesn't have to pressure it, but he can't let a guy twice in a row turn around and ding you for a jump shot. A straightaway three by Marin. They are now 0 for 12 from three so far in this game. The Portland State defense turning into some offense. Alley with a good look three. Just missed on that one. 13 point lead. Marin off the left angle. Finds Butler in rhythm for three. It's 0 for 13. 0 for the day from the three point line. How about this? Portland State's defense has held their opponents in this tournament so far to an 0 for 28 combined three-point effort. Curtis grabs the ball. A whole lot of people, Tony, shooting 38% from the field and 0% 0 for 13 from the three-point line. I mentioned it before the break. It's a combined 0 for 28 opponents shooting from three against Portland State in this tournament so far. What a remarkable number. Fawcett blocked. Loose ball grabbed by Butler. Here's Knight, going up against Carter. Hands off for Butler. A corner three from Fawcett. Still can't break through. Oh, of 14. Offensive foul is gonna be called. This will go against Carter. Nice job by Dre Marine. Dre Marine, who is as unselfish as any guy, will have a chance to watch Marine has played almost 150 games Man. in his career at SUU, which is a, a school record, and 92 Big Sky regular season games. That doesn't count tournament games. It just shows you how long he has been there, five years as a starting point guard. His dad played at Western New Mexico. His mom had to practice. He was a week old, so his dad took him to practice, wrapped up in a blanket. Basketball has been a part of his life every day, uh, every day since. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Southern Utah. All Big Sky Conference honorable mention a year ago. All academic Big Sky Conference. Favorite player, Damian Lillard. Constantly wants to learn more about his work ethic, his toughness, and leadership. He's got a lot of that already. Long pass out to Murray. So two things I love about him. One is dur durability, obviously, but as I said, he never changes expressions. Good, bad, indifferent, he just plays. Marine outside. Butler coming downhill, stripped, gets it back. Fawcett the putback. Fawcett the leading offensive rebounder in the league, all-time leading rebounder at SUU. Getting rich going through the glass right now. 11-point game with six minutes to go. 16 second chance points compared to two for Portland State. The officials a few times have had to have conversations with players between the whistles. Second Maybe round a little of the bit tournament. Of talking going out there on the court. Second round of the tournament. Oh, it, the the uh, intensity rises with each round. Foul is going to be called on the drive here. This will be the sixth on Southern Utah. Both teams now, and the bonus from this point on. The quarterfinals of the Big Sky Conference Tournament continuing right here on ESPN+. Plus. One more game still yet to be played. Northern Colorado against Eastern Washington. Tell them Portland State trying to put a lid on this one as the number seven seed 
trying to beat the number two Thunderbirds. Alley for three, clangs it out. Skying for the rebound, Iman. What a great rebound by Iman. Up in the crowd with both hands. All good rebounders go after it with two hands. Shot clock down to five. See what Carter has here. Slicing through in the lane, beats the buzzer, and puts his team up 13. What a great finisher this kid is. Remember in the first half where he flexed his muscle, and I said, I'm not sure he has all that muscle to, to flex, but he can finish around the basket. He is uncanny. Only weighs 175 pounds. See, and I believed in his strength. I, Moody from way outside. It's off the front of the rim. Moody was 50% from three in the last five games. Every shot attempt against Weber State was a three. Marine will give it a try. No. Dre Marine. 0 for 15, the Thunderbirds are now from three. And now it's 0 for 16. Marine. 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 3 from deep. Foul is called on Dre here. And that is going to send Alley to the line for a 1 and 1. What I think is also interesting, too, is defensively, Portland State, when they get in these situations, they don't play careful. They'll still no. play well, with that intensity they, and toughness. They I, trust themselves. You just read my mind. I, I was just getting ready to say Portland State's perimeter players keep constant pressure on you offensively. You could never, uh, they, they, they've got no catch and shoot guys. They all put it on the floor and attack the basket, which is not to say they can't shoot from the three point line, but they just pressure you with the dribble. Ali with an important front end of a one and one here. If they can knock down their free throws, they know they can run through the finish line and not to the finish line, which is their mindset. Now remember, SUU won both games in this series this year. SUU hasn't been healthy for a long, long time, maybe since about Christmas, uh, where they've had guys out again, missing Tavian Jones, their leading scorer tonight. They had a great win at Weber State where Dre Marine and Tavian Jones both missed the game. So this, this is kind of a crippled up, banged up SUU team, not to take anything away from Portland State because they have played lights out tonight. And the turnaround for Portland State came after that second loss against Southern Utah. Floater by Marine, that's his first field goal of the game. He has four points. He's cut it now to a 13 point lead. It's Southern Utah who needs the takeaways and they get one right here. A kick ball is gonna be called against Thomas. And that kick ball call probably saved him a layup at the other end. Yeah, you definitely take it if you're Thomas, because they were about to be off to the races there. Yeah. Southern Utah trying to put together their best 424 to save their season. They have the leadership, they have the experience. I don't know that they have. Now they the need to make the plays. Right yeah. yeah. Moody into the corner, Fawcett for three, and finally Southern Utah breaks through. They're one for 17 from three, and they've cut the lead down to 10. Alley underneath for Iman, and it's blocked and taken away. Here come the Thunderbirds. Marine down the alley, no, the tip back, no. They come up empty, and here's Thomas on the other end. What a great finish, and what a great effort by Mays and Fawcett to try to take it away. Last year, Tavian Jones. Coach Simon speaking so highly of John Knight the third, saying he's a yes sir, no sir kind of guy, and he's been so vital to helping this team reach the heights they've reached so far this season, but trying to save their season now. Alley with a push off and an offensive foul. Nice individual defense by Moody there. Moody, one of the heroes of their game at Weber State. That great, great win on the road for him. Boy, he's had a tough night tonight. 0 for 8 and 0 for 7 from the three-point line, but played great individual defense that time. Southern Utah, who hit a flurry of threes to come from behind in the late moments and beat Portland State back on January 27th. They'll need a number of big buckets here. Marine for three. That's no good. Alley the rebound. Marine is the guy who hit the big three-pointer that sent that game to overtime.
about a month and a half ago. Alley loses it, gets it back, and the lead is 14 with under three minutes left. Well, he's lucky he, uh, he may have gotten away with a travel on that, but both officials right there, so maybe not. Alley with eight, Burke with eight, Carter with 11, Thomas with 14. John Knight, the third, has 13. The jump ball is called. The possession arrow is Portland State. John Knight, the third's seventh turnover tonight. And without the leading scorer on their team, you almost feel like John Knight, the third, has tried to do almost too much tonight with all this quickness and defensive speed around him. He is a great player and a warrior. He is just tough as a pine knot, as we've seen him hit the deck a couple times tonight. But he has been all over the place with his seven turnovers. Burke in control. Thomas skying up! And an exclamation point for Portland State, who will likely be moving on now to semifinal Friday. A 16-point lead. Spurgeon for three, short, one for 19 from deep. It has been a defensive clinic here so far in this tournament by Portland State. The Vikings, with their ability to play multiple different positions on offense, and then their ability also defensively to make great mental switches as well as switching all five out there. Marine hits a three, that cuts it to 13 with a minute 53 to go. Well, Southern Utah averages 79 points a game, held the night to 54 by this swarming Portland State defense, and the number two seed is in big trouble. 67-54, here from Boise. In the Welcome you back, Portland State. The Vikings, so many bright moments at different times. And the big two-hand jam from Khalid Thomas who's been in control right from the start. Well, he is long, tall, and quick to the basket. Khalid Thomas having a terrific Big Sky tournament in his two games. The Vikings, Burke set to inbound. Throw it across now for Carter. Carter safely across the 10. Thomas deep in the paint again. He has 16. Portland State is a very hard team to press with their great card play and that overall team quickness. I think if you press them, you run the risk of what just happened happening. Moody, 0 for 9 from the field and 0 of 8 from deep. It's just been a tough day. We've watched it today with a few different guys who have just had tough shooting games. And earlier, Josh Bannon today had a tough one. Fitzpatrick, slow to get going, had a few moments in the second half, but it was a tough day for him. And tonight, it's Moody in the third game of this quadruple header who has had some of the looks, just not able to get it to go down. Well, as this team game ends, and seniors on this team like Moody and Marine and Knight, it's going to leave a very bitter taste in their mouth. This will be two years in a row. They've actually got upset uh, as a higher seed. Last year, Montana State beat them in the semifinals to get to the finals. But as I said, they have not been healthy since Christmas. And in talking to Coach Todd Simon, he told me they've had very few practices where they've had everyone available. Between sickness and injuries and COVID, it's been a struggle for the team that was picked to win the, the regular season title. To the two free throws, the lead back down to 13. Alley's trap. Portland State has three dagger as any team could play with in the month of March. Well, they won last night and they look like a completely different team tonight. I, I, I mean, it looks like they took it to a different level tonight in the second game of the tournament. Well, you saw when it locked in there in that second half. Deep, long three is going to be off from Fleming. The rebound to Portland State. Out of the court they go, Thomas over to Burke. And Burke will wait for the foul and he'll make a trip to the free throw line. He has eight points already in the game. And SU now Squire getting the crowd going. The fans of Portland State watch their team start four and 13 on the season, coach. And boy, have they been very different since. They're about to win their 10th 
of their last 13 games. They have really turned it around. I'm gonna tip my hat to the Thunderbirds and to Todd Simon. They never dropped their head and looked like they were not gonna finish this game and play hard. The team has been beat up all year, playing without their leading score. The guy that was named the preseason player of the year, they have fought tooth and nail all the way to the end here. Ian Burke makes both free throws. Burke said that this team feels like they've had two or three different seasons. This might be their fourth season, and it's their best one so far. These are the wins they were hoping to get. It was the loss against Southern Utah on January 27th. They said that changed everything for their team, but they started to really feel like they were dialing into the way that they wanted to play. Moody up and under, gets one to go. What a shot by Miraculous win then at Weber State. And as I said, they have fought illness and injury. A steal, Moody. No good this time. The rebound by Marine. Can't get the end one, but will go to the line. So they get a key takeaway. But the hole probably too deep to climb here with a 14 point deficit and just 39 seconds left. And they're sh showing to me a lot of individual pride as they continue to For play. Sure. Not dropping their head. They're, they're going to finish this season and uh, great careers uh, on this group. Several guys on this team have played over 100 career games. Dre Marine, as I said earlier, almost 150 in his career. They've had, they've kind of turned the image and turned the, the expectation completely around down at SUU. Dre Marine hits that free throw. He's engaged to be married, actually. Wedding date set for May the 7th. His fiance, a real estate agent there in Las Vegas. And obviously, so many of these guys, a bright future in a number of different ways, whatever field they choose to go into. And Coach Todd Simon said, you know, he loves to help little fish turn into big fish. And he helps a lot of people go on to do great things after basketball. It's something he prides himself in. And Dre Marine, with a bright future, such a mature guy, had a chance to talk to him. And it was just a joy to have a conversation with. And making, 12 point game. making a good decision as a point guard, marrying a realtor. <laughs> Beautiful move by Marine there. He has 11 points in the game. And a timeout called by Portland State with 32 seconds left to play in this one. But yet, Coach Simon. Thomas with an opening. The ball knocked out of his hands. It'll stay with Portland State. And they led right from the jump. Boy, it was an ambush almost the way they started this game. As I said, as they as we started the second half, it seemed like they were playing with six or seven players against SUU's five players, the way they were flying around the court. Marine with a nice spurt here towards the end of regulation. He has 13 now. Thomas is going to be fouled. Portland State in this game led by as many as 17. They never trailed. This was a 2-2 game with 18.56 left in the first half to that. All Portland State. It's one thing to win one of these games. Psychologically, this says something different to your team when you're able to soundly win with this type of performance. You mentioned the injury certainly hurting Southern Utah. That it's too bad that Jones was unable to stay with this team and play with this team in the tournament. As injuries can happen to every team, but they affect every team differently. No question. And I think in this our sixth game of the Big Sky Tournament, this is the first lower seed to win, isn't Indeed it? Indeed it is. Marine a three. It's gonna be short. The rebound is off of Southern Utah. It'll go to the Vikings with 8.8. And the Viking fans rise to their feet in celebration here. They came in as a team playing on the first day. They're hoping to stay through the weekend. Michael Carter over to the Portland State fans to celebrate. The clock expires.